Okay, this tutorial is just meant to show how to render a Z depth out of Max and use and use it as a displacement map. Because sometimes creating a displacement displacement map from scratch is difficult or even impossible. Here I've modeled just a basic object. It's just whatever, just for demonstration purposes. Um, and I set up, oh, I had at one time set up a camera. We'll do it again. Um, set up a camera pointing at that object. Like that. And then <clears throat> the important thing when you're doing this is to um, figure out basically how far away that camera is. From your from your object, so to there that's about 100, well 120 feet or so. So that tells us how far we need to make our z uh, the numbers we need to plug into our z depth. So for z depth, you go into render elements, you add z depth, um, and then down here we'll say our z depth minimum is about our z depth minimum needs to go to the front of our object right there. So we'll put that at 120 feet. And then we'll say 140 feet is for the max. So whatever's 140 feet away from the camera will be solid black. Whatever's 120 feet away from the camera will be um, solid white. And everything else is in between somewhere. Um, with this camera, we want it to be. We need to make sure it's an orthographic projection, which it is. That way we don't get any perspective in our rendering. Um, so then once you have that Z-Depth set up, you just render, and you can render with the, Z, the, the frame buffer, the V-Ray frame buffer. I use V-Ray to render. You don't, need to, you don't have to have V-Ray to do this, I don't believe. Actually, I don't know if Max has a built-in Z-Depth, but I'm sure there's a way to do it. Um, all Z depth does is is render things black or white or gray, depending on how far away it is from the camera. So you can see um, the the stuff that's sticking out more here is white, and that little rod that was behind is more of a, a darker gray, um, and that is giving the computer depth information. Um, <clears throat> So I already have this saved out, so I'm going to cancel the render. Um, the important thing to remember here is when you save it out, save to save to a TIFF and um, when you hit save and do the setup, make sure it's a 16-bit color. That gives the that gives the computer better depth information and it can render a much cleaner displacement map that way. Um, okay, so... Uh, <clears throat> so there's that object. I, I, I saved out the z-depth already and then I, I mapped it onto this flat object. All this is is a plane. Um, so that's just a plane. Um, okay, so... <clears throat> I have the plane, I use the UVW mapping to get the displacement to go where I want. And then I put that... Um, okay, so... <clears throat> uh, I, have that dif I have that map in a material here as the diffuse slot. I made that show in the viewport by pushing this button. I dragged it onto this object and put a UVW map. And so I can see what my displacement is going to do here. But then in the actual material I just turned turned the map off by unchecking right here. Um, so that it doesn't render with those colors but it does show me what the displacement map is going to do. But then I just dragged and dropped that that map right into here. Z-depth test. Um, <clears throat> and then when I render uh, we'll see what we get. Remember, there's the original object, rendered a Z-depth of it, 
put that Z depth as my displacement map here. Um, I, I set it to 10 feet. Actually, let's set it to 20 feet. Um, everything else I left default. It's using 2D mapping. And we'll see what we get here. Um, sorry, my render, my computer is really slow, but you can see what's happening here. It's taking that that flat plane, one polygon, and it's displacing that shape perfectly onto it. Um, you can see that there is some faceting and things like that. Uh, you can get rid of some of that by upping the, especially some of this jagginess here. You can get rid of by rendering your z-depth at a higher resolution in the first place. Um, upping your settings uh, like here the resolution and the precision you can set those higher obviously you'll sacrifice render time um, and if my original object that I rendered the ZDEV from was well, had more turbo smoothing on it and was smoother then you wouldn't get so much of this faceting here but, uh, but there it is you can use this for all sorts of different things I use it um, all the time, especially when you're doing intricate details that you don't want to have to, um, you don't want to have to have all those polygons in your scene. This is a good way to get around it.